Good morning and welcome to Wayman African Methodist Episcopal Church, our virtual worship service. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, our general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men and women, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the glory and honor of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see a new day, a precious day. Today is a day that we can be glad and be glad in it. Knowing, Father God, that everything can be just right. Everything can be right in the name of Jesus. We ask that you be present with us. That your love be with us. Your comfort be comforting. Everlasting. Father, as we go through this service, Father God, that we will be as one, Father God, one in spirit, one in presence, one in all God Almighty. Amen. Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31. I will praise you in the great assembly. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. The poor will eat and be satisfied. All who seek the Lord will praise him. Their hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. All the families of the nations will bow down before him, for royal power belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. Let the rich of the earth feast and worship. Bow down before him, all who are mortal, 
all whose lives will end as thus. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. First John chapter three, 13 through 23. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life when within them. We know that re what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to love, ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and can do the things that please him. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of the, his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Our prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly seech, beseech you and grant that we, receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament which shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in the remembrance of me. Amen. If you will take your communion cups at this time, I will bless this communion. For then the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. 
when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way he also, after the supper, took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. But this is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank him for giving his life on the cross. The blood that was shed for you and me. Take this, drink it. Giving thanks. Amen. The Lord's Prayer in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we worship God in giving, we thank you for your gifts. You can do so by mail to the church. The address is given there on the screen. You can also use the app Givelify or uh, the website wayman amec dot com. Thank you for your gifts. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything. There's not anything on this earth that is worth having without the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for being able to enjoy this day, to be thankful to be a witness to this day, a day, Father God, of good tidings and good cheer. Father, we thank you for the peace and serenity, Father God, that encompass all of us. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for keeping us in a pattern, Father God, that is straight and true, that is truthful to the word. Father God, as we go through this service, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the word that's going to come forth. That the preacher that brings the message this morning, Father God, be true and be full of love and compassion. Mercy and grace shall shine upon us. Father God, we thank you for all that you have for us. And as we listen to the word and as we go through this sermon, Father God, that we will be blessed and touched in a way that we are lifted up and we renew in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you. Amen. This morning, we're blessed to have Reverend Harleen Hardin. Reverend Harleen Hardin is a retired ordained elder 
of the Northern Illinois Conference of the United Methodist Church. She was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee and a graduate of Booker T. Washington High School, Lewis University of Romeo, Illinois and a graduate of Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary of Evanston, Illinois, where she earned a Master's of Divinity degree. Reverend Hardin has served several churches throughout the Northern Illinois Conference as an associate and senior pastor. She retired on June 2018 to Scottsdale, Georgia with her family and two grandsons. As a seasoned clergywoman who has traveled abroad and served in a variety of ministerial settings, her most significant accomplishment in spite of these things shared with you today is that she is a sinner who has been saved by grace of God through Jesus Christ, called by God and sent to preach the good news that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The next voice you'll hear after the sermonic hymn is the Reverend Harleen Hardin. Please pray for her as she comes. Amen. Amen. My looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray and take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day. Be holy, thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart. My zeal in Ooh, as thou has died for me, and oh, may my grace to thee pure. Unchangeless be all living thou. Oh, pure one, unchangeless be all living Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm Reverend Harling Harden, as you've heard in my introduction. Indeed, it is a pleasure to join you in supporting our pastor, during this time of need. Pastor Black and I uh, have been friends and colleagues since seminary. And she is loved, of course, you know this, by many 
and respected. Now that I'm retired and we are living through this pandemic, she is counted among others with whom I have chosen to worship and to pray on Sundays for the past year. So I consider myself to be part of you and I want to thank you for receiving me this morning. So let's bow our head for a moment of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to thee, my strength, our redeemer, and pastor's restorer of life. My message this morning is entitled, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. Most African Americans will agree with me that on Tuesday, April the 20th, will go down in history as the first time a Caucasian law enforcement officer, Derek Chatwin, was found guilty on three counts of murder for killing our brother. George Ford, Floyd, another brother who uh, lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The magnitude of this verdict sent shockwaves all over the world, resulting in President Biden and Vice President Harris expressing their sentiments that this historical moment is the first step for change, accountability, and reform in our law enforcement system. Even the Reverend Bernice King, the daughter of the late Martin Luther King, shared her thoughts. And I quote, this is a turning point, she said that will let us continue to correct everything that stands against love. I can breathe now. For the moral arc of the universe is long, but today it bends towards justice. Thanks to the million of people under the banner of Black Lives Matter who are standing up, speaking up, and not letting up on humanity. Church, this is a moment that requires that we consider the standards of evidence that man uses in our judicial system to determine guilt or innocence. I, like many of you, listen carefully to the closing statements of Floyd's prosecutor. He made sure that all the evidence, the witnesses, the testimonies, the videotape provided the facts beyond a reasonable doubt to bring a verdict on all three counts of murder to bring that guilty verdict, and it did. This incredible moment revealed to me and hopefully to you that our prayers and our need for change has been heard by God, who is always actively involved in the affairs of his people. God, is simply affirming his love for us and allows us to have experiences that we can learn from. For example, has anyone under the sound of my voice ever been sermon, uh, served to sign to serve on a jury is what I'm trying to say, particularly in a criminal court case. 
You see, these kind of cases usually require that the burden of proof be beyond a reasonable doubt. But what is the origin of this requirement? My research found that in 1987, a subcommittee of the United States Judicial Conference proposed a charge that included these words, proof beyond a reasonable doubt is proof that leaves us firmly convinced of the defendant's guilt. Similarly, God has given us a charge. His charge is that we are to love the Lord, our God, with all of our hearts, with all of our being, with all of our strength, and with our mind. And we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are to do this so that everyone can see that it's beyond a shadow of a doubt. But, but how do we bring this charge to reality in our life? Well, the way that we do this is to become followers of Jesus Christ. And in so doing, we open ourselves to receiving help of the Holy Spirit, which is God working within us beyond a reasonable doubt. As we praise him, as Psalms 22 has said in the congregation and encourage others to trust him. You see, God knows our suffering. He knows the injustice of our society and the struggle of systemic racism. How many people remember our brother David and how he was hated? how he experienced trouble all around him and how he endured great suffering that brought him to his knees. You see, this suffering is the same for many of us, including our pastor. And suffering ushers in the need for prayer and our need for prayer the prayer of faith allows us to release our praise. Oh, I've experienced some things and I know something about prayer and praise. Let me share something with you. One of my experiences when I was appointed to serve in the far west region of the Northern Illinois Conference as the first African-American female to serve as an associate pastor in a particular church's 180 year history without any persons of color in his congregation. Let me tell you, even though the bishop and the board of ordained ministry sent me to this place, all of the people there were shocked people began to ask all kinds of questions and they were suspicious all around me. I had no family there. And in those early days, a lot of hurtful comments brought tears to my eyes. And that brought me to my knees to pray. When I prayed, I was reminded, I was reminded of God's promise to deliver, to restore, to heal the brokenhearted, and to spread the good news of redemption to all the families of my congregation, as well as those yet unborn and future generations to know that things that God has done through me and throughout our creation, created world. Interestingly, the gospel lesson 
and the epistle reading lifts up Jesus Christ as our gift from God while preparing and sharing us with the implications of what it means to be Christ-like. The epistle now uh, acknowledges that those inside the community of faith is seen as children of light. And those outside the community of faith are seen as the children of darkness. This is why the epistle says, don't be surprised, brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. For everyone who hates a brother or a sister is a murderer. Not my words, but the words of the scripture. And if you're a murderer, you know that they do not have eternal life living in them. But what I love about the text, it says that those who believe and abide in Jesus and love their brother and sister know that we must love one another. Why? Because Jesus and his son and he loves his father and God the father is love. Oh, beyond a reasonable doubt, God has demonstrated his love by sending his only son to pay for our sins with his life. We can then be assured that when we abide, which means to continue to, to trust in God and we in him, we will not only bear good fruits, but we'll be able to see his spirit producing hearts of love in others. Church, our text reveals a powerful connection between our love for each other and God's love for us. As Christians, this happens through our actions and our obedience. God has given us so many examples of what it means to love. There's a familiar a lyric that most of us know from a favorite song that says, they will know us. They will know that we are Christians. How? By our love. Let me share a little story with you that was aired on a local TV show in Memphis, Tennessee. And it was entitled Pass It On. There was a woman by the name of uh, Barbara White, and she saw uh, that her community was in need. So she goes on the weekend, every weekend, she goes to the store and she spends her money and she buys uh, these bags for the homeless. Then she and her, her granddaughters, if there's three of them, they fill these bags with food and they travel to a neighboring park and they give them out. Well, the local TV station, WREG, which is channel three, gets wind of her generosity. And they send a TV crew out to interview her. Well, she, she didn't understand what was going on in her neighborhood because there was a lot of fuss. And she was surprised when she heard this knocking at her door. She goes to the door and the TV announcer there wanted to know what may have motivated her to do this outstanding work. So she stated to the TV announcer that she had had some major surgery 
and she was staying with her daughter. And the Lord spoke to her heart and told her that when she got up, that she needed to help those who were less fortunate than herself. She told the TV announcer that she didn't have a second thought, but that she simply wanted to do what her God had told her to do. And she said that all of a sudden help started coming from all different places. Once she got $300, then she got $700 hundred dollars from an anonymous donor, and then she got a thousand dollars. God had led her to do an action to help others, and God tells us in his word that he will always provide. See, this is only one way that we are assured that God is real. Our scripture says that even when our heart condemns us, and it will, God is greater than our hearts and knows everything about us. Church, this is deep because loving gives us confidence in our relationship with God. This is a combination of scriptures that help us to see our relationship with him is good. Our relationship is even more than what we thought. Yes, the gospel of John is about faith. But you know what? The epistle says that God wants to also teach us about fruitful living so we can see through our scripture that it's important to abide in Jesus Christ. And abiding then is not just a one-time decision, but to abide is a continuous process that lives on in the life of the believer beyond a reasonable doubt when we love one another. Therefore, if anyone says that he loves God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not see his brother whom he sees every day, how can he love a God whom he has never seen? God commands that we love him first and that we also love our brother. So as I get ready to close, I want you to remember that we need our God through Jesus Christ in our life. And we need to remember that God is going to bring judgment upon us. So we must be prepared to face the highest standards of judgment and have the highest standard of evidence and be found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt for seven counts that address the way we live as Christians. One is, have you honored God and accepted his word as proof of our love for him? Have you shown love for our brothers and sisters? Three, are you influenced by the world rather than God's word? Four, have we faith and confidence in God's promises? Five, have we allowed God to abide in us and we in him? Six, 
have we produced good fruits? And seven, are we willing to glorify God as our Father despite whatever circumstances may arise in our life? If we live our lives as disciples of Christ, then, then, and only then, are we willing to help to transform this world so that the preponderance of evidence is exposed to all that we too have been found guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I want to invite those, even though we've been having some difficulty with technology today, I know somebody who doesn't have any problems with technology. And for those who have heard this message, I pray that you know that one day all of us are going to stand before our Lord God. And we're going to have to give account of our life. Questions are going to be asked if you received Jesus Christ into your life. You can do that right now. Right now where you are, you can look up and ask God to forgive you. And he will. And you can indicate that you believe that he is real and you want him in your life. That's why when I heard the the uh, beautiful hymn, our faith does what? It looks up. I want you to look up right now and know that God loves you and he wants you to be a part of his kingdom because he's got some promises for you. So if you will, think about looking up. It's your faith to look up with. And you've heard those sobering words that were sung today. My faith looks up to thee, thy lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. God wants to take all of your guilt away. Oh, let him from this day be holy thine because you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and he graciously to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen.